This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. In this video here, we're gonna teach all you mere mortals out there how to properly store your paints. There's two things you wanna be aware of, heat and cold. If you're storing your paints anywhere where they're gonna freeze, your paints are probably gonna get ruined. If you're storing them anywhere where they're, it's gonna get too hot, it's probably gonna ruin your paints also. So what you wanna do is you wanna store your paints somewhere in a place where it's about room temperature and it's not gonna be uh, exposed to excessive heat and cold. So I like to store my paints inside my garage because my garage doesn't ever get down to freezing because it's heated but what you want to do is find a location in your house where it's not going to get below freezing and probably not going to get above about 90 degrees and ideally it would be about 80 degrees so now that you found a good location to store your paint in now it's time to think about what to store your paint in and the most logical thing is to store it in the can that it actually came in but sometimes that can that it came in could be damaged or it could be used quite a bit and have a lot of paint around the rim so it won't seal properly so you got to begin thinking about storing it in something else besides the original the original canister so there are several options that I like when it comes to actually storing my paint. And the gallon canister, typically your paints are gonna come in a quart, a gallon, or a five gallon bucket. And if those uh, containers that originally came in are really empty, if there's only about a quart left or a pint left, it doesn't make any sense to store it in the original container because it's gonna take up a lot more space, especially if it's a five gallon bucket and it only has about a quart left in it or less than a gallon left in it. You wanna store it in a smaller container because the amount of air that's actually created by the lack of paint in that canister is going to cause it to possibly dry out and skim over inside it and you want that container to be airtight and to have the least amount of air space in the container it can so you want to find a smaller container to store it in your local paint store or hardware stores can sell you these actual metal canisters and these are lined canisters that have Teflon coated in them that's not supposed to rust and typically the can cans that they actually come in are coated and won't rust either but I found with my experience that's not the case for either of them. I've seen the original canisters rust and I've actually seen these canisters rust also and so I've come up with this solution and that's putting them in a plastic container. So one of the things I really like about these plastic containers that I get from my local paint store is you don't actually have to have a tool like a 5-in-1 tool or a screwdriver to actually open it. It just opens with your hands and then to close it it just snaps back on and it creates an airtight seal and this cup is almost indestructible and it doesn't rust now we'll talk about actually labeling your products so when you store them and you go back to get them you know exactly what's in the can for a can like this if you're just going to store it right in the original can everything's right on it except if you start getting paint all over the can then you won't know what's in it it'll end up possibly covering some important information on this can that you want to know down the road say four months down the road four years down the road if you want more of this paint if some of the key information is covered up and you take it down to the paint store they may not be able to mix up the exact same thing that's actually in this can so you want to make sure if anything's covered up with paint you want to write on the top of the can and the side of the can where there is no paint what's actually in this can and some of the key information on this I'm going to be looking for is this one, want, one thing I want to know is what sheen is it is it a flat satin or semi-gloss and typically that's going to be written on the bottom of the can right here and this one says satin another key element that I want going to be looking for is what type of product is this this is a product called resilience from Sherwin Williams so I want to know the sheen and the product Product. And then a couple of other key elements you want to know is what is the color name and what is the color number. And typically there's going to be a label on the top where they print out and it's going to have the color name and then the corresponding number of that color. And it's really ideal to have both of those things written on your label or exposed on your can. This is what I usually do is I write on the top what where this product was. And so if this was like on the interior bedroom, kids room, I'm going to write that right on the top and I'll say just say kids room and then on the sides I'm gonna write some key information right here and I'm gonna write the color name right here on the side of the cup the name and then the color number and then I'm gonna write the sheen and then I'm gonna write the name of the color so same thing we'll just label the top and the sides if any of that information's not exposed on your can you're gonna to want to write that information where it's exposed and not covered with paint so when you take it back to the paint store they can mix up the proper paint for you and here's another real quick simple tip while you're pouring your paint into your canisters Another thing that's really good to do for the do-it-yourselfers is make it a drawdown card. And you're gonna just take a three by five card and you're gonna smear 
a paint, about half that card with paint, let that card dry, and that's gonna actually give you a sample of the paint that you can take down to the paint store when you have a mix up your paint to verify that they gave you the exact product and the exact sheen. Dip my finger down in this paint. Make sure your paint is shooken up really good. And then you're gonna smear just a little bit on this card. That's about all you need on that card. And then on the spot right here on the side, right here, that's where you write your color name, your color number, the sheen, and the actual product it is. So once your canister's all sealed with paint and labeled properly, there's another thing you wanna do, and that's put a daub of the paint right on top of that canister. That way you know exactly what's inside the canister without having to open up the lid. And here's another real handy tip. When you get your paint in this canister, it's all sealed up, break out your smartphone and actually take a picture of the canister. That way you can have a record of it stored right on your computer. So now that you're done pouring all your paints into the canisters they're supposed to go into and you got them properly labeled, now you can go store them where they're not gonna freeze or get too hot. When you're done watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to Home and Gardening for Mirror Mortals. And if you want more tips and tricks on painting, go check out my channel, The Idaho Painter.